So welcome to our session, information session for today. Um, and thank you for joining us today. So my name is Tiffany Sober Smith, and I am a member of the Trade and Investment Committee at the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and I will be moderating the session today. So today, um, GCCI presents the first of a series of informative sessions between the GCCI and the Guyana Livestock Development Authority also known as the GLDA, to educate our members about some of the regulations and procedures relating to the livestock industry. So today our presenter is Dr. Premnath Tihul, and he is a senior veterinary officer and head of the quarantine certification and inspection unit at GLDA. And he has worked with the authority for over 10 years and most importantly, he holds a master's of preventative veterinary medicine. And as head of the quarantine certification and inspection unit, Dr. Tihu oversees the importation of all animal and animal products to ensure its safety, inspects and issues sanitary certificates for the export of wildlife and monitors the importation of veterinary pharmaceuticals into Guyana. So today, Dr. Tihu will be informing you of the standard operating procedure for importing livestock products into Guyana. And he will also share details on the procedure to export livestock products and requirements for building abattoirs. So before I hand it over to Dr. Tihu, I would certainly love to encourage you to send any questions you may have in the chat which will be addressed at the end of the presentation. And secondly, just for housekeeping, um, if everyone can stay on mute, um, just to prevent any interruptions. And lastly, I'll now hand it over to Dr. Tihu for him to share all the information that we are here to get today. All right. Thank you, Ms. Silvers, for that um, comprehensive introduction. Actually, I was never introduced before. Good morning, everyone. As Ms. Sobers mentioned, these presentations, which are a series of presentations, was actually discussed um, during um, interactions or meetings between the GLDA and the GCCI. We decided to start with um, the procedure for the importation and the exportation of livestock and livestock products because um, I guess this was one of the um, areas of interest of the members of the Chamber of Commerce. I have a presentation which is, which is prepared and I'm going to um, elaborate on the different um, procedures and processes which are to be followed with respect to the importation and exportation of livestock and livestock products in Guyana. All right, the outline for my presentation this morning is uh, basically a background of the GLD. And I was telling Sean and Ms. Sowers that, you know, the GLD is a relatively new agency and many uh, persons from within Guyana, they don't know a lot, whole lot about the GLD. They often confuse us with NARI, but the GLD is not NARI. We are going to be dealing with the standard of regulating procedure for the importation and exportation of livestock products into Guyana and the procedure for the export of livestock products. Another topic that we will be dealing with this morning is the requirements for the building of abattoirs. All right, as a mode of introduction, um, the GLD was founded on the 1st of September 2010 by, an act, by act number one of 2010. It is basically an amalgamation of three, of course, from three different agencies, the National Dairy Development Program, the National Agriculture Research Institute, and the Animal Science Division of the Crops and Livestock Department of the Ministry of Agriculture. 
Our agency is being headed by a chief executive officer and our staff complement to this is approximately um, 210. So basically, what is the GLDA? The GLDA is a semi-autonomous semi agency of the Ministry of Agriculture mandated to provide services that will contribute to the enhancement of livestock production and livestock productivity. Our aim is to provide and promote greater efficiency in the livestock and livestock product industry and to provide enhanced services in livestock husbandry, livestock health and research and to make provisions for effective administration with a view of improving commerce, trade, and the export of livestock and livestock products. I guess that is where my department comes into play. We deal fundamentally with the trade of livestock and livestock products. Here we can appreciate uh, the structure of GLDA. We are an agency within the Ministry of Agriculture. We have the Minister of Agriculture who is responsible for the policy direction of the agency. There is a board of directors headed by a chairman. And we have our CEO who is responsible for the day-to-day -day management of our affairs. We also have a deputy CEO and he is basically responsible for our genetics improvement department and our animal production unit. Now there are five basic department or five departments within the GLDA. These are the administration and finance department, the animal health unit, the livestock industry development unit, and as I mentioned, the genetics improvement unit and the animal production unit. Now the animal quarantine unit falls under the animal health unit and we play a critical and crucial role in the prevention and spread of diseases, not only within Guyana, but beyond our borders. The actions that we take or the measures that we take and the decisions that we take on a daily basis can have um, severe implications for our country if those decisions are not um, based on science. Okay. So um, I'll now go to the, into the meat of today's presentation, which has to do with the standard operating procedure for the importation of livestock products into Guyana. Now, for the importation of livestock products into Guyana, an SOP was developed, which is tripartite in, neighbor, in nature. It was, um, it is an agreement between the Ministry of Tourism, Industry and Commerce by virtue of the Trade Act, Chapter 9101, the Guyana Livestock Development Authority by virtue of the Animal Health Act, number seven of 2011, and the Ministry of Public Health, the Veterinary Public Health Unit by virtue of the Public Health Ordinance, number 145, and the Food and Drug Act Chapter 3403. Now the purpose of this SOP is to describe the policy and the guidelines with respect to the importation of meat. And the target group is all importers of processed, frozen and fresh meat, excluded fish and fishery products. Now questions may arise as to why is fish and fishery products excluded? In the definition of animal, when the GLA was formed, fish was not included. So that is why we have the fish, fishery department and for the importation of these products, the veterinary public health unit deals with this aspect, be it fish, be it shrimp, be it prawns or other crustaceans. So those products, GLDA, you, if you are importing those products, then the GLDA does not have a responsibility or we don't monitor the importation of those products. That responsibility lies within the veterinary public health unit of the Ministry of Health. All right, so this SOP is basically an eight-step SOP that was developed for the purpose of um, the importation of processed meat. The first step basically deals with the importation of 
poultry um, meat. And it should be noted that on a regular basis, we do not import poultry into Guyana. And by poultry, when I say poultry by definition, I mean meat from chickens and meat from duck. The reason being is that we are self-sufficient with, do, with these two commodities. And once the private sector can supply the local demand, then the country does not allow the importation. However, from time to time, we will have shortages and those requests are made. And once there's a shortfall, then the government would allow the importation. So step one has to do with the importer indicated his or her desire to import poultry meat from the Ministry of Tourism, Industry and Commerce. This is done by completing an application form for import license, which is done in triplicate. The Ministry of Tourism, Industry and Commerce would indicate its concurrence by forwarding a list of names of the prospective importers and the quantities approved to the GLDA. This list will be accompanied by the respective applications for import license from the said importers. And there's a note number two, that the Ministry of Tourism, Industry and Commerce notifies the prospective importer of its support for importation and advises the importer to visit the DLDA and have their application endorsed. An important note is that um, basically for importation of livestock products, the process starts at step number two. Step number two, the, the prospective importer visit the GLD headquarters and complete an import application form seeking approval for the import of meat or meat products. And it should be noted that other documents should accompany this application. These documents are the application for import license form, which is basically six copies, quotation from the prospective supplier, and we generally request the original quotation, the certificate of origin of the commodity. This is important because we know that um, if products are from within CARICOM, then they would be excluded of um, common external tariff. However, if they are outside of CARICOM, then it can attract other taxes and duties. The profile of the supplier, inclusive of legal license to operate. This is important because um, we generally don't want to be imported from a company that is not licensed to operate in that country. And then the meat will not be safe for human consumption and so on. There's a note here that um, in cases where there's desire to import from countries that are not approved for importation by Guyana, an application for export should be made by the competent authority of the exporting country to the GLDA. In terms of um, the third step, the GLDA upon receipt of the above mentioned request, inclusive of any other documents as may be required, will conduct a risk assessment to determine the, the level of risk that will be posed by the import. Dependent on the level of risk, a decision is made whether to permit the import or not. Now, some, some of you may ask, why is it that GLDA has to do a risk assessment? But I want to tell you that it, Guyana is free from Potomac disease, highly pathogenic avian influenza, African swine fever, and various other exotic animal diseases that can have devastated impacts on both our animal and human population. So that is why we would conduct a uh, risk assessment once these products are coming from a country that is not approved by the GLDA. And to do the risk assessment, it may be necessary to conduct a country visit at the expense of the importer for the countries not approved. The risk assessment basically is a joint undertaking between the GLDA and the Veterinary Public Health Unit. If the import is permitted, the steps following are applicable. If the import is not permitted, the importer is advised accordingly and the process concludes. 
And there's another note. As part of the risk assessment, the importer may be asked to submit additional documents. If, based on our assessment or risk assessment, we, we see some processes that we are not satisfied with, we can request additional documents. Step number four, at the time of the application to GLDA, the importer also indicates his or her desire to import the set products from the Note, the Veterinary Public Health Unit, based on its mandate, makes a determination with respect to the said import. It should be noted that once the GLDA gives approval, generally um, the Veterinary Public Health Unit basically endorses that approval. We have never had any incident where the, G the Veterinary Public Health Unit would reject an application that is endorsed by the GLDA. Step number five, the import is permitted the GLDA informs the importer of its support for importation. An no objection letter is prepared along with the application for import license is issued to the importer. And there are two notes here. A processing fee is required to be paid by the GLDA, is required to be paid to the GLDA by the importer prior to the issue of the permit. And note number two, conditions outlined on the permit Reset the conditions of import stipulated by the GLDA and the Veterinary Public Health Unit. Step number six, the approved import permit, along with the application for import license, is submitted to the Veterinary Public Health Unit by the prospective importer. The Veterinary Public Health Unit also stamp and sign the permit and the application for import license form indicating their approval. Step number seven, the prospective importer submits the approved documents, that is the import permit and application for import license to the Ministry of Tourism, Industry and Commerce for final approval. And step number eight, at least 72 hours prior to the arrival, the date and the time of the commodity the importer must notify the Veterinary Public Health Unit of the arrival of the commodities and the port of entry to facilitate inspection and certification of the commodity. And that is very scary to verify that the, the commodity is fit for human consumption. And there's an important note here. The importer must present all relevant documentation, inclusive of import permit, an application for import license form to the authorities at the time of inspection at the port of entry. This concludes the process, Ms. Sobers. If there are any questions, we can probably deal with the questions now um, because we are going to move on to our export. You are muted. Yes, I just realized. Thank you, Dr. Tihol, for that presentation. Very informative. Let me take, I saw a question. Um, there is a question. Um, has there been any cases where GLDA had to conduct a country risk assessment for a country that Guyana does not have listed as an approved country from which livestock products can be imported? And I had the same question too. Actually, um, from when I'm in the department, we have, we have um, the approved countries basically are North America, the USA and Canada. We have a country that we have to visit, but because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we could not make the visit. So based on that, we look at the risk and we basically facilitated the request. But when, the situation is better and uh, COVID has restarted a bit, we will definitely conduct risk assessment. Got it. And are you able to say what country you are planning to visit? Sorry now. Well, we have imports, imports from um, Brazil, Panama, and so on. And we, as the department develops, we will have to conduct more and more risk assessment. But generally, if, if I was to advise someone to import commodities, I would generally advise North America because 
there's no need to conduct risk assessment. We are satisfied um, with the FDA's certificate. Makes perfect sense. So um, I do have a question. Is there a list of any prohibited livestock that cannot be imported? Well, Ms. Ms. Sobers, there is not really a list, but there are countries that Guyana do not trade with because of their sanitary status. For example, Brazil, Guyana is free from Potomac disease. Brazil is not free from Potomac disease. Colombia has Potomac disease, and we will receive requests of importers wishing to import, for example, beef from Colombia. The thing about countries when they have these diseases, the price for the meat product is generally very cheap because nobody buys from you. Um, but there's a huge risk of you imported um, infectious pathogens. So basically we have countries that um, we would not trade with because of the sanitary status. Oh, that, that makes perfect sense. Um, so we have another question from Ronald. He would like to know, um, there is a butchery that imports meats from Suriname, I believe on a regular basis, but you mentioned Suriname isn't an approved country as yet. How is that possible? Well, we look, we look at the documentation. The thing about it with Suriname is the type of product. Okay, we did our risk assessment. Risk assessment is being done on a daily basis, sometimes, we review the documents, we review the company profile. We do what we call a desktop on risk assessment of the company. And um, once we are basically satisfied with those, because of the magnitude of trade, we have to do um, the in-country um, risk assessment. And it's more because it's African swine fever and we were concerned about Suriname trading with another country and the risk of Suriname importing on the Okay. Got it. Thank you. Um, another question. Is it a legal requirement for all poultry, poultry farmers to be registered with the GLDA? Um, actually, no, Tiffany. For now, it's not a legal requirement, although we have a Crops and Livestock Registration Act of 1980 that is um, that requires each farmer to be registered. We have a project coming on shortly with the FAO that will deal with um, farm registration, animal identification, traceability. One of the areas we are going to look at is review of legislation and to ensure that farm registration um, becomes part of the whole um, certification process. So down the line, um, it will become mandatory. It is going to become mandatory. Got it. Thank you for answering all the questions. Are there any other questions before we move, move forward? None? Okay, Dr. Hitiho, at this moment, we don't have any other questions, so please proceed with your presentation. All right, so the procedure for the export of livestock and livestock products. I actually did some research in this, and um, I was advised that we did export livestock products to other countries. In fact, we exported beef sometime back to Grenada. And the procedure for the um, exportation of livestock products are listed below. The prospective importer shall notify both the GLDA and the veterinary public health units of its desire to export livestock products. The import requirements of the exporting country shall be provided to both agencies. The GLDA will would conduct a risk assess an assessment to determine whether Guyana is able to satisfy the requirements of the exporting country. One of the requirements that is basically set um, maybe Guyana is free from Potomac disease without vaccination, and Guyana is indeed free. Or they may say that the farm from which these animals are coming from should be registered and should be identified. If, this, if, the, if the farm is not registered and the animals are not identified with the international standard approved method, then we would say, look, we cannot satisfy this requirement. If the result is no, the importer is notified and the process is concluded. 
If the result is yes, the importer is notified and he's advised to come in and fill out an export application form. The sanitary certificate is prepared and issued to the exporter. The veterinary public health unit is also required to issue a certificate of wholesome meat. What basically happens is that meat falls under the ambit of the veterinary public health unit, and they would issue a certificate stating that the meat is fit for human consumption and it's free of any chemical, antibiotics, and so on. One of the requirements of the veterinary public health unit is that it's called a facility from which the meat is coming from shall be in compliance with its public health ordinance. It is basically saying that it should comply with minimum, with the minimum standards of ASAP. All right, and it should be a, it, a, it shouldn't come from basically a backyard facility. It should have some amount of standards. And my next topic is requirements for the building of abattoir. For the building of an abattoir, um, the first thing that you need to do is show proof of land ownership. You don't want to go and build an abattoir on a land that you do not own because it's a huge investment. A business plan shall be prepared and submitted to the relevant agency. These agencies can be Holvest, the Ministry of Agriculture, and so on for endorsement. Approval must be sought from the Central Housing and Planning Authority and also the Environmental Protection Agency. The EPA would usually conduct an environmental impact assessment to determine the, the level of um, the effects of the, of the facility on the environment and based on the results from the um, assessment, the EPA can say, um, well, you know, you have to modify the facility or it is okay to continue. The agency that basically deals with abattoir is the Veterinary Public Health Unit. And a blueprint shall be submitted to this unit, the Veterinary Public Health Unit, for final approval. So that's it um, for my presentation. Thank you very much for your invitation. Are there any, any other questions? Uh, thank you, Dr. Tehu. Um, there is another question. Um, when an exporter wishes to export livestock product, um, is it the responsibility of the exporter to determine the conditions for export or can the exporter approach GLDA to share his intention, then work along with the agency to determine if it is possible to satisfy the export requirements? Thank you. Thank you, Daphne. That, that is a very important question. The thing about the requirements, the, ex, the important country set the requirements. So let's say um, Jamaica is going to buy beef from Guyana. Jamaica sets the requirements. Basically, um, Guyana would have to um, look at the requirements and based on um, a revision of the conditions, we would determine if we can satisfy the requirement or not. Only recently, we, we had had a request from um, Tortola for the BVI, for the importation of poultry feed. And the guys were saying, um, they don't have any requirements and I advise the importer to check with the Ministry of Agriculture and the import requirements were provided. And the thing about it, we could have satisfied the requirement. The requirements, we are able to satisfy those requirements so we can proceed with the export. We are always willing to work with the um, potential exporters. We would advise them on the, on the protocol to follow or the direction to follow so that they basically can um, have a smooth flow. Okay, that is good information to know. Um, our next question is coming from Mr. Christopher Haywood. And his question is, how long are the sanitary and wholesome certificates issued by GLDA and G VPHU valid for? 
Well, it's basically um, a one-off sort of behavior. If, for example, you come into the GLA wishing to import meat, we would do the sort of case. It's one of If it's animal, generally it's three months. The sanitary sort of case are valid for three months. Got it. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions from anyone else in the group? Well, Dr. Tiho, looks like we don't have any other questions. Um, if you want to provide your contact information, so in case anyone else has questions at a later date or something comes up, um, you can provide that either in the chat or you can say it out loud so that um, everyone can write it down. So if they need to reach out to you, they can do so. Yeah, no problem. Uh, my email address is basically vet underscore Tiho at yahoo.com but you can contact the GLD on 220-6556 or email our CEO secretary at glda1910 at gmail.com. Once an email is sent to the CEO secretary, those information are channeled almost an instant us, and we will respond. Got it. And um, do you guys have a uh, social media or a website that you're able to provide? We have a Facebook page. I'll have to check on it. I know um, the new CEO is working on that, improving the image of GLD and the awareness of this, because as I told you, it's a relatively new agency and a lot of people are not aware of the GLD. Got it. Okay, great. Well, that's good to know that um, you are working on the page. So that way it's easier for everyone to find you. Um, and again, thank you so much for your time and thank you for your knowledge and thank you for your partnership. And um, hopefully uh, we can have more of our members being able to successfully do imports and exports with your partnership. Thank you very much, Ms. Sobers. It was definitely a pleasure partnering with you guys and sharing information. This is what we do with the GLD. All right? I love it. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you and bye-bye. See you guys. Bye. Have, Have a great day, day, everyone else, and thank you for coming to the session.